Welcome back, Coil Pack, to another Click Team Firefly tutorial. Today, we will be going over tips in, in order to get your meshes from Blender to Firefly. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new application and throw the Firefly elements in it. There we go. Okay, and let's throw an engine in there. And I'm going to change the ambient light. That way we don't have to add a um, light node. Throw a camera in there. And I'm going to change the positioning just a bit. Change that to negative 10. And we will be using a static mesh. And we will need a primitive object for the animation that we will be creating in Firefly. So, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a sphere and put the radius as 0.25. That way it's not just a massive block or a massive ball floating around. And that should be it. Um, I'm not going to load the mesh like you should. I'm just going to use the mesh file since this is just a tutorial. Now if we hop over to Blender, press A, delete to delete everything in the file because we're not going to need any of that. And we will create something simple like a door. So Shift A, Cube, and that... Shift A is to bring up the um, mesh, um, sorry, mesh selector, where you can add all these different meshes. If you're not familiar with Blender, I'm gonna press N to pop up this menu, so we can manipulate the um, position and rotation of the cube. Now, one important thing to know with Blender is whenever you export, Firefly will always recognize this origin of Blender as your mesh origin. So, I'm going to go ahead and just change this some. So, 0 0.25, 3, 7. Just make a simple door. Nothing too fancy. Now, if I was to export this as is right now, it will rotate on the axis where it's at now. Which is centered on the mesh. But let's say I was to move this up then Firefly will treat this as the origin. This is void when exporting to Firefly. This will just be used for uh, mesh manipulation in Blender to get it to where you want. And um, in order to change that, I'll show you that real quick because it will become really helpful. For example, our door hinge needs to be on this side. So it would be more helpful to put the origin down in this bottom corner and set it all to zero rather than trying to manipulate the mesh and line it up. Um, first thing you're going to do is hop over into edit mode by pressing tab, and we're going to press A to deselect all the meshes. meshes. Now, you have three selection modes. If you press control tab, it will bring up the mesh selection mode um, menu. You can select it by vertex, which will allow you to manipulate and control all the vertices, as you can see, by right clicking to select the vertice. Um, you can select by edge which will allow you to right click and select any edge on the mesh and it will always place the <coughs> excuse me it will always place the cursor at the center or always place the selection at the center so if I wanted to move my cursor it would be placed at the center of that line and then face selection allows you to select any face on the mesh by right clicking that face and it will set the selector at the center of the mesh and then whoops didn't mean to render that and then um, you can put the cursor to select it for this we're going to select the edge and we're going to select this bottom edge right here and actually there we go and in order to move the cursor to the selected edge you will press shift s and it'll bring up your snap feature or your snap menu and you want to select cursor to select it 
and we'll press tab to get out of edit mode and this is actually a long hotkey but it's control shift alt c in order to bring up the set origin and we want to set the origin to the 3d cursor and that will move the yellow dot where blender sees the origin of that mesh and put that back into ortho mode or sorry iso mode um now we can set the location to zero zero and we know in firefly it's going to rotate like a door should and I'm just going to go ahead and export that as a 3D studio file that's the file that I work with I'm gonna put it on my desktop and if we hop over to Firefly we can now load that door mesh improperly I should add and go to my desktop door 3ds Okay, we have the door loaded now. I'm going to hop over to the event editor and add a few commands. Repeat when key is pressing up. And we are going to set the Y position. And you don't have to follow along with us. This is just to show you the origin placement. So I am going to re-export that door with a different placement just to kind of show you what so you can have a visual of what happens okay now if we run this our door will hopefully be in the field of view there we go And I think I selected something wrong. Yeah, I selected Y coordinate on accident. Okay, let me fix that. Should be Y rotation is equal to the current Y rotation. There we go. Plus one, enter. And I'll edit that. and make it minus one and that should rotate and not flip there we go and I'm currently holding the up key you see it rotates on that origin even if let's say we move this mesh over away from um, zero Move this over five. So now, even not being at the origin of Firefly, it still rotates like a door should. And if we hop over to Blender, let's just move this over. Uh, negative one point five. That's the center of the door. I am going to re-export that as the door mesh that we have. That way I don't have to reload in Firefly. And now when we go to rotate, it rotates the center of the door. As you can see. So, hop over to Blender and move this back to normal real quick. Okay, now what we're going to do is set up an animation in Firefly. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that collision is on for our mouse pick to work. And I'm just going to run through this really fast. If you want to learn more about mouse, <coughs> excuse me, mouse pick, I have a tutorial about it on the channel. Let's go ahead and delete those. And I am going to actually create a group.
create an always command. We're always going to set the position of the primitive to the mouse pick. Oh, that's weird. And I'm just going to copy and paste this and change that. Okay, and repeat all the left mouse button is pressed. We're going to check once. There we go. And just decollapse that. Okay, so first thing we have to do is we're going to make an always statement. And we're going to always set the Y angle of the static mesh to the to the value A. And the reason for that being is Firefly or sorry, Click Team cannot manipulate Firefly's um, rotation as an event. It cannot read the rotation as an event, so you have to set it to something you can read. So that's why we're setting the Y angle to that always. Now, where you want to check for a collision and that's, for example, clicking the door. So we're going to click on the the little primitive that we have for a mouse pick, and we're going to see if it has collided with a particular node. And that node will be the static mesh, so right-click, retrieve, fix value. There we go. And we want to set on a flag to trigger the animation. So we're going to set on flag zero. And if you have version um, 290 or above, there's, I believe, three updates since 290. It was uh, 290, 0.1, 0.2, 1.3. You can actually name flags so that can make it a little bit more easier. And I'm not going to go into that because it's not really important for this tutorial. Now, the next line of code, we're going to check to see if that flag is on. So right-click, values, flag, is flag on? And flag zero. And then we're going to check the angle of the mesh. So right click, insert, and we're going to go to static mesh, and we're going to compare that first value, that value A, because that's what our Y rotation is always set to. If value A is lower than 90, so we want to open the door. Let's just imagine that the door is closed right now. Um, like a lower than 90 and we're going to we're just gonna leave it like that for now um, over in the events we're going to right click on the static mesh and we want to go to the values and add one we're gonna add one to the first value so now if we run the frame whenever we click on the door it should rotate up oh, that's weird just make sure I have collision on real quick okay collisions on there collision is on there maybe I'm missing something um, let's see, set so Y angle to the value of attribute A, always, flag, let's constrict this to time, so we're going to put every one tenth of a second, we're going to move that up, and flag, zero is on and that's the flag we set and the value is less than 90 we're going to add one to the value that should work that is weird that's exactly how I've done it in my game just delete this for now Let's see if it's actually recognizing the collision. So, 
flag is flag on zero, let's end the application just to see if it's actually working. Okay, so it's not recognizing that the flag is on. Which is weird. Here, let's... I'm gonna add a start of frame event. And we are going to set node properties, or we're gonna set this value to 90, so the door is facing us. So non-zero. Okay, so the values work. It's just the collision for some reason. I'm gonna go change the collision radius of the mouse pick real quick. Zero point two five. Well, let's see if that works. There we go. Okay. So now that's working as it should. Let's put this uh, put this back in. Actually, I'm just gonna delete this. So now flag zero is on. And I'm going to delete this, not to confuse anyone. If flag zero is on, insert, we're going to check the value of what we set the rotation to. So value A, if it is lower than 90, we're going to add one to it. So values, add one to value A. And now, when we go to click on the door, it should open. There we go. And it's reading so slow, or it's moving so slow because the game is running so slow for some reason. But let me add a frame rate in game. So we can keep an eye on that. Just throw it in there somewhere. I'm going to make the text a little bit bigger. That's one thing to keep in mind. Always make sure you're checking your frame rate when you are programming. Um, because what might seem slow could be due to a frame rate drop. And we're going to always set that, set text to the FPS. Um, if you want to get the FPS or tries in your game, it's under the camera. So get current FPS, get current tries on screen. And I accidentally deleted my quote, quotation marks. Oh, I don't need them. I need a string. Get string. There we go. So, see what it looks like running at 20, or sorry, at 60 FPS. Hopefully. 1, 9, 31. Okay. Oh, 30 frame PS is, or 30 FPS is about average. So, let's see what it looks like at that. Looks a little bit more smooth. Um, if I was to actually load the mesh properly, it'll probably run at a consistent 60 frames per second, but just for the tutorial, I'm not going to do that. Um, you can play around with that in your game. Make or Just make sure you try to balance the your code and your meshes with your frame rate if you want to keep at 60 frames per second. Um, the next tutorial I'm going to do is probably over adding materials to uh, meshes, and I have a AK-47 model here for that bring this in to here real quick just to show you guys import 
not FBX. Import 3D Studio. Whoops, that's the wrong model. Import 3D Studio. I forgot the original file format was FBX. There we go. Alright, so I I have this AK-47 model for that, and you guys will see why I'm using this specific model in the next video. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, um, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.